Uh, good afternoon to those of you on the East Coast and good morning to those of you on the West Coast or in the Central United States. Uh, this is Ballotpedia's webinar on notable 2018 ballot measure results. My name is Ryan Byrne. I am a staff writer on the state on the ballot measures project. I specifically cover state ballot measures and also on this call is Josh Althick who is the project director of the ballot measures project including state ballot measures and local ballot measures. Uh, during this webinar we're going to give really brief overviews of what happened last night with ballot measures, overall results, and then kind of uh, top line results with uh, prominent topic areas uh, that we saw on the ballot this year. We can move to the next slide. So this November, we saw 155 uh, measures on the ballot. Uh, you can see that 64 of these were citizen initiatives. Those are measures where citizens uh, collect signatures to put issues on the ballot. Not every state allows citizens to do this. Uh, and we had 89 referrals, which were either referred to the ballot by state legislatures themselves or by special uh, commissions or committees uh, such as in Florida, there is a constitutional revision commission that put a number of measures on the ballot. Uh, you can see so far, we still have about 11% of measures uh, uncalled. We have not determined whether they're, have, they've been approved or defeated for various reasons. Either they're too close to call or they're uh, fairly close, but they're in mail-in ballot states and things uh, related to that. You can see here, though, that legislative and commission referrals are generally approved at a higher rate than ballot initiatives. This is a trend that is, is pretty common over the years. Uh, citizen initiatives are often more expensive with support and opposition, and uh, they, they tend to involve more novel policies. So there's kind of stronger <laughs> opinions about those, but sometimes there are with legislative referrals as well. But other times they're kind of constitutional, uh, minor constitutional changes or cleanups or things like that. So here we see so far, we still have 10 initiatives uncalled, 27 approved, 27 defeated. So that's tied right now. And you can see legislative and commission referrals have had a higher approval rate. So this is a kind of interesting slide because we're looking here at the 10 most expensive ballot measures of 2018. And uh, what we've noted so far is that the side that spent more money won. So you can see here a lot of these are ballot initiatives and they were, a lot of them were rejected. And in each of those cases, opponents spent more money than uh, supporters. The two most expensive ones were in California. One of them would have limited the revenue of dialysis clinics. And there we saw the SEIU, which is a labor union, kind of face off against a number of dialysis clinics or dialysis firms that own a number of clinics. The dialysis firms outraced the SEIU and the measure was defeated. We saw something similar with rent control in California. Um, though the numbers, the discrepancy wasn't as, at, as large, but it's still a three to one advantage uh, money-wise for, for opponents, and it was defeated there in Nevada with question three. And question three is very interesting, and I think Josh will talk about this a little bit later, but it's actually, or it was approved in 2016. Nevada requires them to be approved twice. Uh, so it was approved in 2016. There is a uh, little organized opposition, and this year, there was lots of organized opposition. They outspent supporters and it lost. And you can see down the rest of the list, uh, various ballot measures that kind of uh, fell into this trend of being very expensive and the more moneyed side winning. So next we're gonna talk about uh, marijuana ballot measures. So last night, Michigan became the first state to legalize the recreational use of marijuana in the Midwest. Uh, another ballot measure in North Dakota was rejected. Michigan Proposal 1 and North Dakota Measure 3 were actually quite different. Uh, North Dakota Measure 3 did not include most of the provisions that are commonly found in 
uh, recreational marijuana initiatives. The legislature could have added those provisions in later on, but the initiative itself did not include those provisions. But anyhow, we saw Michigan Proposal 1 approved. Uh, this could affect kind of uh, legalization proponents, what states they seek ballot initiatives in next. For example, in Ohio, there's already a campaign under, underway to get a legalization initiative on the ballot in 2019. Ohio is one of the few states where you can put initiatives on the odd numbered year ballots. Uh, and then we also had a few medical marijuana initiatives this year. In Missouri, we actually had three. Uh, and you can see on the chart that Missouri Amendment 2 was approved and the other two were rejected. So there are a number of reasons this could have happened. Um, but the scenario here was that if all of them passed, they would have been, some of them would have been in conflict with each other. And in terms of Amendment 2 and 3 and Proposition C, on the other hand, two of them were constitutional, one was statutory. We're not exactly sure what would have happened. Uh, some legal scholars say it would have needed to go, it would need to be decided in the court. Uh, the Attorney General also said that about previous ballot initiatives that kind of were in similar conflicts with each other. But Missouri voters approved Amendment 2 and rejected Amendment 3 and Proposition C, so Amendment 2 is the one that will go into effect. Uh, so that made that scenario much uh, cleaner than, than it could have been. Um, and in Utah, there's Proposition 2. Uh, Proposition 2 is currently leading uh, as election results come in, but it, it still remains uncalled because not all the re election results are in in Utah. So next up, we're going to talk about redistricting ballot measures. So uh, you can see from that chart that so far, the ones I've been ca called have all been approved. Uh, Utah Proposition 4 is the only one that remains uncalled and it has a very narrow lead so far. Like I said, not all results are in. So this could very much change. It could be, it could be defeated, it could be approved, uh, but currently has a very narrow half of a percentage point lead. Uh, so it, it remains uncalled. And, Utah Proposition 4, kind of similar to Michigan Proposal 2, would create an independent commission for congressional and state legislative commissions. Uh, in Colorado, the legislature actually referred to the ballot to amendments uh, to transfer its own power to commissions. Uh, one of the amendments specifically addressed congressional redistricting and the other one specifically addressed state legislative districts. Both of those were approved as well. And in Missouri, uh, Missouri Amendment 1 was approved that it did a number of things besides uh, making changes to the redistricting process in Missouri. Uh, but in terms of the redistricting provisions, it actually did a few very novel things. So one, it created this position called state demographer. Uh, it's not a commission, it's an individual. And this individual will draw the maps and then submit these maps to uh, these, these existing, already in existence uh, political commissions that then will have the opportunity to amend them, but they can't come to a supermajority vote. The state demographer's plan kind of just remains in effect. Uh, a number of officials would be involved from both parties in deciding who this state demographer is. Um, so it's not a, a directly appointed position by one individual. And Missouri Amendment 1 would also require kind of a new novel criteria that we haven't really seen involved before in the redistricting process. Uh, these concepts, which the initiative calls partisan fairness, and it uses a formula based on previous election results to determine that, and competitiveness. Uh, in Missouri Amendment 1, unlike um, most of the other ones, only affects state legislative uh, districts. And related to redistricting is election policy, which is on the next slide. Um, and don't worry, I, we have a chart on the next page, but there were a lot of election policy ballot measures this year. Uh, so I'm just going to briefly highlight some of the notable ones before showing you the, the election results related to these. So Florida Amendment 4 was approved. In Florida, constitutional amendments require 60% supermajority vote. I think last time I checked and results are pretty close to 100% in Florida, it was around 64%. So it was approved and what Amendment 4 does is it will restore the right to vote for felons with a few exceptions uh, for murders and felony uh, sexual offenses upon the completion of their sentences. 
Michigan Proposal 3 was uh, another interesting ballot measure because it addressed a number of election policies. Uh, it added straight ticket voting to the state constitution, which the legislature recently repealed, but it also added automatic voter registration, same day voter registration, and no excuse absentee voting to the Michigan constitution. There are a number of other policies that it added to the constitution, but they were things that uh, were largely already in existence in statute and it just added them to the constitution so they would be harder for the legislature to change in the future. Uh, voters in Nevada also adopted automatic voter registration through a ballot initiative. And in Arkansas and North Carolina, the state legislatures put constitutional amendments on the ballot to require photo voter IDs. And in both of these states, these were approved. Both of these amendments were in response to uh, lawsuits in which courts threw out statutes. Um, so the legislature in order to enact photo IDs needed to put these on the ballot and have voters approve them. So here you can see all these election policy related ballot measures. Some of these uh, I just addressed. Can we go back a few slides? Sorry about that. Um, so with the election policy, there are a number related to contributions as well. So you can see towards the bottom of the list, uh, there's campaign, new campaign finance restrictions in South Dakota, which were rejected. Amendment W would have also done a number of other things uh, besides put new restrictions on campaign finance. And there are ones such as banning foreign political contributions in North Dakota. That one is currently ahead in the polls, but it's also uncalled. Uh, banning out-of-state contributions, specifically to ballot question committees in South Dakota, that one was approved. And Colorado had an interesting one that would have removed certain campaign contribution limits for opponents of candidates who were self-funding themselves, but voters rejected that one. Uh, Montana banned ballot collection, which is a, which is a practice in some states. Um, Arizona recently banned ballot collection as well through statute, uh, but this is a ballot measure that did that. Ballot collection is when people essentially collect ballots and drop them off, and these are states that uh, have some form of mail-in ballot, whether it's the entire state or, for example, in Arizona, Montana, you could receive a ballot. You can receive a ballot in the mail. So next, Josh is going to start talking about uh, a group of ballot initiatives related to new restrictions on taxes. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Um, so this is a, a trend we identified this year, kind of one of the more conservative trends. The um, Proposition 6 was probably one of the more notable measures in this, in this trend. It would have repealed the gas tax from 2017 and required voter approval for future gas taxes. Uh, it, was, it was defeated in, in California. Um, different uh, sort of groups within this trend include uh, two measures in Oregon and, and Washington that would have uh, prevented grocery taxes um, that was also a, an issue in California, but it was ultimately decided through a compromise and, and the initiative that was kind of uh, led to it was withdrawn. Well, that, the initiative itself wasn't directly related to uh, grocery or, or soda taxes. Um, at, at issue there too, it, the grocery, the groceries would include like prepared foods and groceries, but also um, non-alcoholic beverages. So there was, a, there was an element of um, sort of soda tax issues going on there as well. Um, so with those in Oregon, uh, voters rejected it. And in Washington, a similar measure is, is actually leading 55-45. So that, those, those measures were split, or at least are likely to, although Washington is a mail-in ballot state. So we're still waiting to call that for sure. Um, one of the other, other trends was um, measures to increase or sort of uh, increase the applicability of a supermajority vote in the legislature to increase taxes. Um, we can stay on the tax. Yes. Um, so, so there, it, Florida Amendment 5 was, uh, was approved, requiring a two-thirds vote. Um, that was put on the ballot by the legislature rather than by an initiative. And then uh, Oregon passed Measure 104, which, which applied a, a three-fifths vote requirement for, for raising revenue to additional um, revenue increasing measures as well. Um, okay, here we can move on. 
Uh, okay, so one of the big issues, sort of big trends this year, and it was new in 2017 and 2018, was Medicaid expansion. Um, and sort of the healthcare issue was, was obviously a big focus of, of this election and, and was um, kind of one of the more uh, polarizing and popular issues that voters were interested in. So I don't have a chart for this one, but there's only four measures to keep track of for November. So that's uh, Idaho, Nebraska, Utah, and Montana. And they, they all had to do with, with expanding Medicaid coverage or in Montana's case, continuing expanded coverage. But um, you'll see a kind of a, a line drawn between Idaho and Nebraska and then Utah and Montana. Idaho and Nebraska measures were approved, um, ex expanding Medicaid coverage to 138% of the federal poverty line. Um, Utah's measure is leading 54-46, but it remains uncalled, and Montana's uh, is actually being defeated right now. U Utah and Montana also addressed uh, funding for sort of the increasing state's portion of the costs for expanded Medicaid. Utah did, did so through a sales tax increase. Uh, and you can, you can see that one is, is leading right now, but we haven't, we haven't completely called it yet uh, as, as a certainty. And then in Montana, um, Montana's mechanism for providing funding was to increase tobacco taxes. And that brought in sort of the, the tobacco industry. And there was, uh, ended up being over $17 million spent on the opposition side in Montana, which is, which is about 17 times more than, at least 17 times more than uh, was spent in opposition to the other measures. Uh, so that measure is, is currently behind by, by four points um, and we haven't, we haven't called it for sure yet. Uh, but, but Montana's um, expansion, Montana already expanded Medicaid coverage uh, and this, this measure would have extended that expansion. Um, as, as it is, if this measure fails, there's a sunset clause that kicks in uh, for June 30, 2019. Um, so other healthcare issues in the ballot, uh, Ryan already talked about Proposition 8, kind of this battle between a union and dialysis clinics. There were also some local measures, um, kind of, they were part of that battle that were designed to limit revenue for um, entire healthcare providers in general rather than just dialysis companies. And uh, last I checked, um, one of, there were two measures, they tried for five and got two on the ballot through the initiative process. One of those measures was defeated and the other one we're still waiting to call. Um, and then in Massachusetts, question one, which was a, which is kind of another, um, it was a, a sort of a union versus healthcare association battle um, that actually split nurses in some cases. Um, but anyway, that measure was um, re rejected. It would have provided patient assignment limits for, for nurses in hospitals. Uh, but yeah, we, we expect to see, I mean, Medicaid passed in Maine in 2017, it was successful. So far in 2018, barring uh, Montana as an exception, which had some um, sort of complications there. So we, we expect that to see something that um, might continue to appear on the ballots going forward. Okay, we can move on to the next. Yeah, so, so energy was a big issue this year and it didn't, um, it didn't end up having the, well, the, the, the conflict was sort of between renewable resources and, and fossil fuels. And, uh, there were there were four measures that highlighted this especially. Um, two of them, Arizona Proposition One Two Seven and Nevada Question uh, Six, were very similar. They would increase the renewable resource requirements for electricity ut utilities uh, to fifty percent in, in twenty thirty. Um, so Arizona's measure was defeated, and then Nevada Question Six was approved. But uh, as as Ryan mentioned earlier, that's not the end of the story for for measures in Nevada. Um, Nevada question three was, was approved in 2016, and then it was defeated in 2018 after a lot more opposition spending. That, Nevada question six is also a constitutional amendment put on the ballot by, the citizen, by a citizen petition. So it, it needs to be approved again in 2020 to actually go into effect. Um, but for this year, it was approved. Uh, the other ener energy related measure we were keeping a close eye on was, was Washington 1631. Um, it was, uh, we haven't called it yet because, because of mail-in ballot situation in Washington, but it was being defeated 44 to 56. So, so it's not super likely to pass. We, we don't know for sure yet. Uh, that would have enacted a, a carbon emissions fee starting at, at $50 per metric ton and, and going up uh, annually until certain goals set by the state as far as carbon emissions reductions were met. Um, so that, that measure was kind of a, 
2016, Washington voters rejected a, a carbon tax measure that was designed to be revenue neutral, and they rejected that one by nine points. So this one got, at least currently, it's looking like it got more approval than the 2016 initiative, but uh, it seems unlikely that it will, will pass in the long run. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, minimum wage was on the ballot in two states. Um, per usual, voters approved uh, minimum wage increases. So to uh, incremental increases to $11 per hour in Arkansas by 2021, and then uh, incremental increases to $12 per hour in Missouri by 2023. Um, these minimum wage measures are, are frequent, are almost always approved when they get on the ballot. Uh, minimum wage was also kind of highlighted earlier in the year in Massachusetts and Michigan, but an initiative qualified for the ballot in Michigan, but the legislature approved it directly. Uh, which is which is part of that indirect process in Michigan where initiatives go to the legislature first. And then in Massachusetts, there was a big kind of compromise made over a minimum wage measure, a paid sick leave measure, and um, a measure that would have decreased the sales tax and provided a, a tax free weekend. So that those those two were close to qualifying or in fact qualified for the ballot, but were sort of part of this trend we're seeing this year of, of state legislatures making compromises with initiative opponents and sort of preventing or precluding the necessity for a, for a ballot measure actually going on the ballot in November. Uh, yeah, and a trend this year was, was abortion related measures. All three measures in 2018 were, were on the conservative side, either trying to prohibit public funding of abortions or to insert into the constitution a uh, certain language saying that there's no right to an abortion or um, like in, in Alabama stating that it's a, a state policy to uh, respect life and recognize and support the sanctity of unborn life and the rights of unborn children. Um, West Virginia and Alabama measures were put on the ballot by the state legislature and, and those were sort of expected to pass and, and they did pass. The Oregon measure was put on the ballot by a citizen initiative and failed. Um, Oregon's measure would have, oh yeah. Uh, so just to highlight a few other sort of notable measures, um, the, the Ohio issue one was rejected. It was a measure to uh, reduce prison sentencing for nonviolent drug crimes, other low level nonviolent crimes. Uh, it, was, it was presented as, well, I guess people disagreed about what effect it would have, but a big issue at stake was the opioid e epidemic and whether or not this would um, be, be some sort of solution or help alleviate that problem or it would uh, actually lead to a, an increased issue in that regard. Uh, and that's especially poignant in Ohio where the opioid epidemic is kind of rampant as compared to other states. Uh, California Proposition 10, uh, we mentioned this at the beginning too, it's one of the, uh, it's the second most expensive measure this year. Um, it was rejected after opponents outspent the support of uh, campaign, which was largely backed by the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, um, three, three or four to one, uh, three to one, I think. Uh, it, would have, it would have allowed local governments, local governments to enact rent control um, on, on all housing. Currently, there's sort of a, a, a limit set by date on when rent control can be, can be enacted as far as when that, that housing was first occupied. Uh, called the Coast and Hawkins Rent Control Act, that would be repealed by this initiative and it would have sort of provided more flexibility. And then uh, uh, the biggest one in Colorado is called Colorado Proposition 112. And by biggest, I mean the most expensive and, and the one seen in most ads probably um, and, and sort of most talked about. Um, the, the measure would have set a minimum distance requirement of 2,500 feet from occupied buildings and other areas and designated as vulnerable by the initiative, which included uh, most water bodies, rivers and, and lakes and reservoirs and creeks and um, areas like playgrounds and schools and, and op uh, certain open space areas. Um, so that measure was defeated. Um, that was another case where, where the side with more money ended up winning. Um, talked about alongside Proposition 112 frequently was Amendment 74, which um, wasn't directly related with regard to issue, but but it was um, the Amendment 74 support was backed by a lot of the same money that opposition to Proposition 112 was, was backed by. And Amendment 74 would have compensated property owners for any decreased value caused by a state regulation or, or 
even a, a local government regulation. So that measure was defeated. Um, so it, it, it did not pass. Uh, Massachusetts question three uh, was, was approved upholding the state's gender identity and discrimination law. And Arizona 305 was rejected, which repealed an expansion of the state's program to provide sort of um, a fund uh, similar to a voucher, but not the same as a voucher to parents and guardians to provide um, sort of alternative uh, education besides public education. So they could opt out of public education and use these funds, which were, which were designed to be funded at 90% of the cost of uh, a public education for the child. And those could be used for homeschooling or private school or, or whatever uh, other source of education. Those two at the bottom there, question three and 305, were the two veto referendums on the ballot in November. There were, there were two other ones earlier in the year, or sorry, three other ones earlier in the year. So veto referendums are interesting because they're petition, they're put on the ballot through a signature petition specifically to challenge a law passed by the legislature. So there's always this kind of implicit conflict between the initiative process and the legislature, but veto referendums bring that sort of to the surface. And you can see that was, that was split. In Massachusetts, the, the policy being challenged was upheld while in, uh, prop, in Arizona, that education policy was defeated. All right, and that's, that's our rundown of the notable measures in 2018. And of course, there were a lot more notable measures and, and depending on what state you're, you're in, there, there, I mean, there were interesting measures in all 37 states that featured statewide measures in November. Um, but these were sort of focusing on either national trends or, or measures that received a lot of national attention. But yeah, let's open up the questions now. Okay, great. Uh, anyone with questions can feel free to drop those into our chat feature. Um, I'm pulling those up right now. Great. Um, cool. Um, uh, affordable housing, we did discuss that a little bit. Anything else you want to add to that, Josh or Ryan, for a latecomer? Back to California Prop 10. Oh, sure. I can add a little bit. So in California, there was also a ballot measure called California Proposition 1. California Proposition 1 was put on the ballot by the legislature to authorize $4 billion in uh, general obligation bonds for uh, affordable housing programs, including housing loans for veterans. So that one is actually currently uncalled. Um, it's running a rather close election. Uh, California, a, a significant number of voters, California is not a completely mail-in ballot state, but a, a significant number of voters do mail in their ballots. It is an option. Uh, currently it is leading though, 54 to 46 percent. Um, so I would say based on previous elections and, and how I've seen the numbers move for specific types of measures, I would expect this to pass, but you know, it's not, there's no certainty yet. Um, and I think Josh would probably know a little bit more about this. I think there was also a ballot measure in Oregon. Is that correct? Yeah. Measure 102, which was also approved. And that was kind of to provide uh, flexibility for funding for affordable housing Cur currently any sort of local bond issues that are, that are approved by a, a municipality, um, they cannot be put towards any projects that have any sort of private backing or private ownership or, or stockholders. That was sort of based on this constitutional provision preventing um, private ownership of, of projects funded by, by local municipal bonds. So that, that specifically prevented um, fe certain federal tax breaks and, and certain tax incentives from being used in conjunction with local affordable housing uh, projects funded through local bonds. So that this measure was approved. It was, it was a measure put on the ballot by the legislature to sort of um, remove that re requirement specifically for affordable, uh, affordable housing projects. And then there's also, um, there's also a requirement that these, these bond, it's concerning bonds approved by voters at the local level as well. Um, so yes, that measure was also approved. Cool. Excellent. Um, we are a little bit over time, so we are going to let Josh and Ryan go because they have many more results to update on Ballotpedia. But if anyone else does have questions, they can uh, either tweet at us 
at Ballotpedia. You can find us on Facebook. We're also on ball at Ballotpedia there. Or email us, editor at ballotpedia.org. We're happy to get you answers to those, track down results for races that you're looking for, however it is that we can assist. And thank you everyone so much for joining us today and Josh and Ryan for stepping away to come and talk with us about ballot measures. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Yes, thanks. Bye. Cool. Have a lovely day all. Bye.